How's it going? Today we're gonna compare the cameras on a Galaxy S22 Plus versus the A53. I know this is not a fair comparison, but it's to let you guys know or visually see if it's worth upgrading to a full flagship phone from a budget phone. So Taltronics sent me this air fryer that I want to try out. I do have some chicken defrosting in the fridge right now, so we're gonna do all that stuff later at night for the low light test. So I figured for lunch today, I'm gonna go back to Trebo's Peri Peri because the last time I went, it was on a Sunday and I had no idea it was closed. So along the way, I'm just gonna take camera samples. All right, let's do a quick microphone test. Testing one, two, one, two. This is what it sounds like on a Galaxy S22 Plus. Testing one, two, one, two. This is what it sounds like on a Galaxy A53. From my impressions, most of the daytime samples, they look pretty close. If there are any differences, the biggest one would be HDR, which is better on S22+. Plus. Now for shooting video, whether it's the front camera or the back camera, there's no stabilization on the A53 shooting in 4K. So if you do want stabilization in your video, then you gotta change it down to 1080p. Or you would just have to shoot standing still, panning around without walking on an A53. So if you like to vlog or do some running gun shots, then you can't shoot in the highest resolution or highest quality on the budget phone. Now for performance, obviously the S22 Plus will feel faster, it's snappier, especially when you're shooting in low light, you can actually feel or see the difference between the two. So if performance is important to you, then go with the flagship. Also, the A53 is wider in a lot of cases, so that can be a pro to you, which you'll see later on when I shoot the low light video. Now the A53 does not have a telephoto lens, you can zoom in though, but that doesn't give you the best results. So if you love zooming in to your shots or video, then you have to upgrade to the flagship phone. In terms of the camera UI and experience, they're both Samsung phones, so they're the same. In terms of the modes, the ones that really stand out to me the most, which the A53 does not have, is Director's View. But if you're not going to plan on using Director's View, then you're not missing out because they both have the same core modes. Now moving on to portrait mode, the Galaxy S22 Plus does have a 3x option, which makes sense because it has a telephoto lens. I do prefer the compressed background look on a 3X, but sometimes it can be a little bit too limiting because if you're in a tight space, you might be too zoomed in. And this is common in my portrait tests is that on 3X is not the sharpest. For the most part, it does miss focus, but that's just me because I'm putting it on a timer and running to my spot. But if I do have a person behind a camera, they can tap to focus and that should fix the problem. And now for Instagram, I would say video is not the best because it's very choppy and it looks very pixelated, especially if you're planning to save it and show it off later. It's not really, rec really recommended. I prefer just to stick with photos, which does way better. But nonetheless, the food was pretty good and I do want to go back and try more dishes. Okay, it is time to try out this air fryer here. It's only four quarts, so it's not the biggest, especially if you are feeding a family, but for a single person like me, it's good enough. I do like the all black look and very minimalistic design. It does come with a cookbook, so if you don't know what to cook, there is that for you. And the book really looks nice, very simple. All the ingredients are, it seems like the recipes are very easy to, um, to use to grab and to cook. So I do like that, very organized with sections of different foods and all that. So that is a nice addition to have within these air, um, air fryers. But I do know what I'm cooking. Basically, I'm just breading chicken and putting in this air fryer and show you guys how easy it is to use. So this air fryer is super easy to use. Everything I need to do is on top. Unlike other air fryers I've seen, some commands or buttons are on left and right, which I have to go everywhere. But this one is all here. So I can adjust my own temperature. I can adjust my time. That's how to play or start and pause. I can keep warm. I can have a timer and all these different like settings and presets I have here which is super easy to use since I'm doing chicken I'm gonna hit that button 
it's already set for me at 380 and it'll switch to the time afterwards 20 minutes so i can actually try to change it just like that the temperature instead of 20 minutes i can probably change it to like let's say 15 and all i have to do is once i'm done breading i will just hit play and that's it So between these two, you can already tell the A53 is much wider and it's great when you're in tight spaces, especially like this where these phones are on the other end already and I can't move back. So if I were to shoot with the S22 main lens, I could probably get this much. So that's why I have to opt out or opt in for the ultra wide. So it's time to pull it out and when I do, everything pauses and it will resume once I put it back in. So even though I have 4 minutes left, it looks like it's done. I'm going to double check on the temperature and, and just double check so I don't want to eat raw meat. Yeah, technically it's done. I don't have to put this back in if I don't want to. So all I have to do, okay let's grab this. All I have to do is hold on to this and it's off. Since I don't want to eat chicken by itself, I'm going to try one of these uh, ramen from Momofuku, which I just got. So I'm going to start with the spicy one. Now shooting in low light situations, you will see the bigger differences between the two. The A53 is just a bit more noisier since the camera sensor is a bit smaller, but it can still handle on its own. Now the biggest con for me about this phone is the lack of stabilization in 4K. So if you're not shooting video at all, and if you don't mind the slower performance, then the A53 will be just fine. So let me know your thoughts about having these two side by side. I know it's not a fair comparison, but it's just to let you guys visualize to see if it's worth paying extra for a full flagship phone for the camera. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.